السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وص... ما في صوت في صوت ترى والله تبدأ تشوف يا حج بدأ لايف نطيات بدأ طيب أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين حياكم الله جميعا أهلا وسهلا بكم في هذا اليوم المبارك وفي هذه الساعة ساعتين المباركتين الطيبتين في دورة وورشة عمل وندوة حول الحياة الزوجية الإسلامية الصحيحة والسعيدة فنرحب بكم جميعا ونرحب بإخواننا وأخواتنا على الفيسبوك وعلى اليوتيوب وعلى كل البرامج والسوشيال ميديا فأهلا وسهلا بكم ربنا يتقبل منكم نستفتح بالذي هو خير مع حبيبنا الشيخ علي أبو غزالة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فسبحان الله حين تمسون وحين تصبحون وله الحمد في السماوات والأرض وعشيا وحين تظهرون يخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي ويخرج الميت من الحي ويحيي الأرض بعد موتها وكذلك تخرجون ومن آياته أن خلقكم من تراب ومن آياته أن خلقكم من تراب ثم إذا أنتم بشر تنتشرون ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون ومن آياته خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف ألسنتكم وألوانكم إن في ذلك لآيات للعالمين ومن آياته منامكم بالليل والنهار وابتغاؤكم من فضله إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يسمعون ومن آياته يريكم البرق خوفا وطمعا وينزل من السماء ماء وينزل من السماء ماء فيو 
يحيي به الأرض بعد موتها إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يعقلون ومن آياته أن تقوم السماء والأرض بأمره ومن آياته أن تقوم السماء والأرض بأمره ثم إذا دعاكم دعوة من الأرض إذا أنتم تخرجون وله من في السماوات والأرض كل له قانتون وهو الذي يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده وهو أهون عليه وهو الذي يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده وهو أهون عليه وله المثل الأعلى في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير شيخ علي بارك الله فيك أخي الكريم شيخ أسامة تفضل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله جميعا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاك الله خير شيخ First of all, it is an honor to be with you all. May Allah SWT bless you. May Allah SWT bless your time, bless your intention to have, inshallah, the best knowledge of this life and the hereafter. And to be rewarded for our sincere intention because the mu'min will succeed and will be rewarded when he has or she has the good intention. So please uh, prepare your intention, renew your intention, and uh, set your intention. Very important. Because innama al-a'malu bin niyat. Allahumma ya Rabb, nas'aluka al This is first. Second, today, as you, uh, as you know, and as you uh, learned, that we will have only two hours about successful marriage and happy marriage in Islam. It means that it is very brief. It will not give you except keys for what we have to do and what we have to know. We know that we have before many workshops, many lectures, we read many books, but today, I believe that it is not only a workshop, it is, it is uh, a responsibility and a start for more reading, more learning, starting having our own library at home. So today I will give you at least 200 books to read. You have to laugh, of course because you will not do it, I know that. But believe me, you need more than that. And inshallah, we will have 45 minutes with our beloved Sheikh Usama. Then I will have another 45 minutes. After that, we'll have questions and answers. So write your comments, your uh, questions, your suggestions, inshallah, we want to learn from each other. We are here to learn from you also, also to learn from your questions, to, to learn from your suggestions. So please write. If you don't have uh, a pen and papers, I, I am very upset and I am very sad. So please, do you have your papers and your uh, pens or you don't have? 
I know that you have your phone and your notes. So please write your question, your, your notes, because we need, we need to take notes, to read books, and so on. So inshallah, let us start with our beloved, inshallah, Sheikh Usama. And uh, today, as, as, as mentioned, it is not to take everything, but at least to, rem to remind ourselves and our ch community and our children what we have to do and to continue learning and continue working to better our life and better our families. So this workshop and this lectures will be good for everybody in the, in the family, not only the new wits or the new, uh, or the uh, people who wants to, to get married. Ahlan wa sahlan fikum wa jazakumullah khair. جزاكم الله خير مولانا الله يبارك فيكم ويحفظكم ان شاء الله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد اشرف الخلق وسيد المرسلين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد it's really a pleasure to have this event in the masjid um, we've, we're planning to do this periodically. We did it a few months back, um, actually a few, quite, a, uh, quite several months back. I think it was in September. Um, and uh, we're hoping from this event that it could sort of um, uh, inspire our matrimonial service program to continue to expand and to get people to know each other. And to make sure that whoever is going towards marriage goes with uh, some basira, some clarity, some vision about the path forward. Because, um, you know, it's one of those critical decisions in life. It has a very, very far-reaching effect. It's something that needs a lot of investment. When the Sheikh said 200 books, uh, uh, I know that that number uh, is a very high number. But in actuality, it symbolizes something. If I really want to experience ha happiness in my family in my marriage, in my life in general. Anything worthwhile needs a lot of investment. Anything done haphazardly without clarity, without vision, um, without thought and strategy, usually ends up leading to a lot of struggle, heartache, and pain. Um, actually, there's some thought also put into the title for today's program. Uh, how to prepare myself for a happy marriage. Now, um, you see in that title, that notion of preparation, I need to prepare myself for this endeavor. Actually, preparing for marriage starts way before the person actually gets married. It starts off from those very early decisions that people make in their lives when they're still in high school and then in college when they start off their careers uh, or whatnot. All of that plays into... Uh, the success or failure of a future marriage. Um, and, you know, that's just to emphasize the point, it starts with me. Before, long before a person gets married, it starts with building themselves up on an individual level. The other thing that you could note in the title, uh, how to prepare yourself for a happy marriage is, Everyone in this life is really searching for happiness. That's, that's a fundamental human pursuit. People want to be happy. People want to be happy. Muslim, non-Muslim, everyone wants to find a sense of peace. We were talking about this in the khutbah yesterday as we were talking about some ideas of preparing for Ramadan and uh, you know, the heartache and pain that people often go through when they uh, uh, don't have the courage to forgive others or they don't have the courage to repent from their wrongdoing. All of those things are just a, a few among a long list of things that weigh on people and remove that sense of happiness. People want to be happy, right? Who's responsible for my happiness? That's something important to reflect on as I'm considering marriage. Who's responsible for my happiness? Is it the other person? They're supposed to make me happy. My husband, my wife is not making me happy. Um, they don't do this for me. They always neglect that and they never say this and that. That type of attitude uh, is the beginning of a lot of struggles that people often go through in their marriage. Another thing to realize is, is happiness. I want a happy marriage, right? Is happiness inward or outward? 
That's something to think about when I'm considering marriage. Is happiness something inward or outward? Well, of course we know it's an emotion. Happiness is an emotional state. Now, that means it's something on the inside. Yeah, it will connect with things on the outside, but it's not on the outside. And this is important to realize because many of the people that often go through some struggles and seek advice, um, uh, you know, a, a common theme in that is when I attach my happiness to a circumstance, to an individual. If it doesn't work out with Fulan, I'm not going to be happy. If it doesn't work out with Fulana, I'll never find happiness in my life. I'm not happy because uh, the people around me are doing this or not doing that, right? So that's, that's something important to think about in this title. Is happiness inward or outward? Who is responsible for it? Does marriage need preparation? Well, what type of preparation needs to happen for marriage? These are all different things to reflect on. You know, you know when we're talking about marriage, um, you know, you might find yourself hesitating to proceed. Uh, you know, some people might go years on end. Uh, you know, they, they, they might, you know, find uh, opportunity after the next. And they might be so hesitant that no matter what opportunity comes their way, they can't find the willpower to go forward. And you know, that's, that's something normal to find, especially in our day and age. Because marriage is... is can be scary, can be daunting. It's a, you know, it can be um, something that could you be a person's jannah, or it could be a great de- a path to a great deal of pain. Now, and that all plays into how I prepare for it, how I invest in it, um, who do I choose to live my life with, right? So, hesitating is okay, but priorities are key. What am I looking for? What am I going to put myself into? These are thoughts that every guy, every girl should think about. Well, if it starts with me, then I need to look at myself uh, with a critical eye. I need to be honest with myself. Who am I? Uh, Can I really expect an angel if I'm far from it? That's a serious question. Can Can I expect to get married to an angel that descended from Jannah? If I, am, if I am a person who does not do the basics of my responsibilities in terms of my responsibilities to Allah or responsibilities towards others, if I'm engaging in kabair, you know, this is a serious question because, you know, sometimes before marriage, people might find themselves living a sort of a double life. And actually, some people might resort to marriage to sort of put the problems of the past behind them. Right? I'm going to run away. I've done a lot of bad things and I want to I be a good person so I'm just going to get married. Right? That's not the way it should work. Right? I've done a lot of bad things and I want to run away from it all so now I want to get married. No, no, no. That's not a healthy stepping stone for marriage. No, I need to enter marriage with clarity of mind and clarity of heart. I need to invest in myself, in my ruh, in my character. I need to prepare myself to be giving in this relationship, not just taking, because they say, someone who doesn't have something can't give it, right? So can I really expect an angel if I'm far from it? You know, you'd be surprised. Sometimes people have that on their radar. They know that they, they may not pray. They, they may even drink, go as far as drinking alcohol, but you might find their requests are, I want someone who prays. The night and fasts the day and I want someone who is this and someone who is that. It's very strange. How on earth can you accept, expect that when you haven't invested? When Allah says, Al-Khabithatu lil-Khabithin Wal-Khabithun lil-Khabithat Wal-Tayyibatu lil-Tayyibin Wal-Tayyibun lil-Tayyibat Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in this ayah that people gravitate to the amal, to the actions, al-a'mal that are um, in line with who they've become as people, right? The same thing works with individuals, right? Individuals attract to, get, uh, are attracted to or gravitate towards those who are upon their shakila, upon their, the, their, their condition in terms of their akhlaq. Um, and that's why they actually say, um, there's a hadith of the Prophet on one end that says this, Al-arwahu junudun mujannada 
Your souls engage before your bodies do. And you'll find that the ruh of the mu'min uh, finds a sense of ulfa and a sense of peace with the spirit of another mu'min. And the same thing with the opposites. That's why they say one of the consequences of sins is it causes the person to feel a sense of wahsha and a sense of loneliness around good people. Right? So, now of course this is not categorical. We found that Fir'aun was married to uh, Say, uh, Sayyidah Asya, one of the best women in human history. It's not categorical. Sometimes you might find an awful human being with a beautiful human being. That's possible. But this is the sunnah, the ada, what's common uh, among, among people because goodness indeed does attract. Goodness attracts. Now when we're talking about marriage, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, Sheikh Ali was reciting the verses that we often recite in, uh, you know, uh, the Ketwik tabs and the marriage ceremonies. And one of those ayat mentions the miracle of marriage. It's a miracle. Wallahi, it's a miracle worth preserving. It's a miracle worth preserving. If I'm going towards marriage, I, I need to realize that I'm going towards al mithaq al ghalil and the augmented covenant. The augmented covenant in the Qur'an is mentioned only twice. It's mentioned in the covenant that Allah took upon Bani Israel and it is also mentioned in the context of marriage. The augmented covenant means it's a serious undertaking. And this is one of the things that many, many people struggle with today. It's part of the nature of our times. Uh, the struggle to commit. Struggle to commit to a career. Struggle to commit to a job. Struggle to commit to a family. Um, now, sing, being, a, being a single person is very different than being a married person or being a married person with children. It's very different. You know, sometimes people, when they go into marriage, they're one foot in and one foot out, meaning they want the freedoms of single, being a single person, uh, yet they want the... Uh, benefits of being married. And you know, this is very common in the cases that are presented to us. Sometimes you might find a guy, for example, who is who starts a family, but then his heart is outside. He might stay out with his friends till 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., or whatnot. Everything uh, about him is, I want to be away from the home. I don't want to be at home. And this is a real big problem. It's a miracle worth preserving, brothers and sisters. It goes for brothers and sisters, actually. Who's responsible for preserving this blessing? Who's, who's responsible? Yeah, you guys, I want it to, it's meant to be interactive as we discussed with Sheikh Qatanani. So who's responsible for preserving a marriage? Is it the husband? Is it the wife? Is it the parents? Who's responsible for it? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Is it just both? Who is it? Is it the husband and the wife? They're definitely key and central. And it's also the family's responsibilities too. And I'm sure many of you guys might have, you know, again, when we talk about marital issues, we really got to be blunt about certain things. Because sometimes, and I found this in so many cases, I'm sure Sheikh Qatanani has found it in uh, probably hundreds of cases that have come to him. Sometimes the guy is very good. The girl is very good. There's nothing wrong between them. Yet you find them fighting day and night, not because there's any problem between them, but because the external forces that get involved in the marriage end up tearing them apart. Now, I've had this in more than one case, and I told the, the both sides, you know, do you guys have any problem? Do you have anything that you don't like about each other? And they said, no, we're fine. But the problem is, she doesn't do this for my family, and he doesn't do that for my family, and so on and so forth. Who's responsible for preserving the marriage? It's everyone. All, fa all parties are responsible, and of course, the husband and wife are most responsible. The husband and wife are most responsible. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, If they both have the willingness to rectify the situation, then Allah will help them and gather between them in doing so. Whenever a reality in marriage becomes um, uh, you know, about both sides fighting for their rights, and not looking at their responsibilities, 
That's when a marriage can easily crumble. Brothers and sisters, now when I'm going to marriage, I need to, I need to be very clear on something. You know, yeah, in the beginning, everything might seem have a very fairy tale, fairy tale image. You know, like a, um, a honeymoon uh, phase, as they say it, as they describe it. Everything might have a very fairy tale image to it, but the journey of marriage actually teaches me a lot about myself, teaches every person a lot about themselves. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage that is void of any conflict. No, the whole process of establishing the bond between the, 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 the husband and the wife might require a great deal of bitter experiences. And this is so critical to understand because true content of character shows through marriage. Now, you know, the, uh, before marriage, the ugliness in my character uh, it, it might be limited to myself when I'm in my private time. But after marriage, there isn't that private time anymore. The ugliness of character that a person has at home is going to show to their spouse. Right? So my m m marriage exposes who I am as a person. And that's why... Adinu Muhammad. That's why Deen, your Deen, what's really Deen about? It's about the way I choose to deal with those around me, uh, the way I choose to deal with those around me. Marriage is about service. It's something we learned from our beloved Prophet. Sorry, I said them. Uh, they say that Aisha was asked, How was he in his home? The, the Prophet sorry, I said them, was a person of great service to his family. Kanafi Mahnati Ahli. Kanafi Khidmati Ahli. He was in their constant service. You know, so do I get married to be served or do I get married to serve? That's a question that everyone needs to ask themselves. Am I expecting that this relationship is going to relieve me of the stresses in my life and I'm just going to be very comfortable? Or is it actually going to present me an opportunity to actually serve uh, another human being? Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things to reflect on on this journey, brothers and sisters. First and foremost, it, first and foremost, at the very top of the list, is making Allah front and center. Making Allah front and center. And I know that might sound cliche for people, but uh, life shows us, the circumstances of people show us that when Dean takes a back seat, that's when devastation happens. We have many stories of people choosing to leave Islam because of someone they want to get married to. Will, willing to sacrifice their fundamental principles, their beliefs because of marriage. And we've seen that those cases, sometimes, uh, you know, the person actually makes a decision, you know what, I'm going to get married to someone outside of Islam. Right? It happens, there's many people that do that And, you know, um, and sometimes you know, it's a very risky thing you know, So that, you know, when, when I'm looking at marriage There's like this risk factor this, uh, you know, it, That I need to assess in the marriage proposal I'm considering Some marriages are very high risk Some of them are moderate risk There is no situation where there's no risk at all. <laughs> the whole process of marriage involves some element of risk because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I might invest a whole lot of money, time, and effort into something and it might fail and collapse. And, you know, of course I never go into a marriage with that attitude, but every marriage always involves risk. But sometimes people choose high-risk situations for themselves. And sometimes, you know, unfortunately, we, we know cases where sometimes a person gets married out of the faith and they see their kids growing up as non-Muslim. You know, we see brothers get married to sisters who aren't Muslim and their children end up being non-Muslim sometimes. Nowadays, we're even seeing the reverse reality as well, where some sisters are marrying non-Muslim men and they see their own children uh, not growing up as Muslim. Now, here's a question. Is it okay for a guy to get married to a non-Muslim woman. What would you guys say to that? Is it okay for a guy to get married to a non-Muslim woman? Huh? Oh, you're very accurate. My, <laughs> it depends. What do you mean by non-Muslim, right? <laughs> it depends, right? 
All right, what about for a woman? Now, we have, when we're talking about this, we have ahkam. And of course, some of these things might be related to shubuhat, some misconceptions. Why is, why is our deen like that? All right, what about for women? Of course, we know the hukum at least, categorically, it's not allowed. But now, a non-religious guy or girl, is it okay to get married to them? Well, you know what? Forget about is it okay. This is the problem. When... Marriage becomes about the bare minimals of what's okay and what's not okay. It often leads to a lot of problems because it's, it's not about that. What's optimal? That's the question what it should be. What's best? What's better for me? What's safer for me? What will bring me closer to Allah and closer to my goals? Now, some people make things about halal and haram. I just want just tell me, is it okay? I don't want to hear anything besides that. But many times, and this is what we urge people to consider, it's, it's not about that. It's something more than that, that I need to really consider. Is this going to be better for me and my deen and my dunya or not? Right? Is it going to be better for me and my dunya, deen or dunya or not? Sometimes getting married to another Muslim might be devastating for you and your deen if they're a person who has no fear of Allah, if they're a person who uh, isn't really seeking Jannah, isn't really seeking to become a better person. Right? So, it needs to be, the discussion needs to be about what's best, what's optimal. And you know what? That's with a lot of things in marriage. That's not just this question. This was just a sample. Now, you'll find in other situations that people will come with questions. They'll come and ask questions. Sheikh, isn't it true that my wife has to have my permission before she leaves the house? Sheikh, isn't it true that um, uh, the husband is in charge and isn't it true that the husband the wife has to obey the husband if a guy comes and asks me that tell that type of question i tell him akhil kareem you're asking for problems be careful in the way you think because it's not about binaries it's about benevolence and birr and sila. It's not about halal and haram. Marriage was never about just halal and haram. It's about what's ihsan. Look at even the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, he was, he was told, fa'fu anhum, wastaghfir lahum, washawirhum fil amr. The Prophet ﷺ was told, you, you're, you're enjoined, O Muhammad, to, uh, um, uh, to make dua for them and to forgive them and to also consult them. The, the Prophet ﷺ never approached his relationships in this superior, inferior dynamic. No, he didn't do that, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Neither did any of the other great examples that we have. It's all based on love. It's all based on the bond that we build together, and that's so critical. What am I choosing for myself? What am I choosing for my kids? Before I get married, I need to think about this. Am I choosing to build a home that is khawi min dhikrillah? Am I choosing to get married for the right reasons? That should be a question that every person thinks about deeply. Why am I getting married to this person? Is it for looks? Is it for career? Is it because I'm attracted to his mind or her mind? What an awful decision. I should get married for the right decision. Getting married, فَالْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ بِذَاتِ الْخُلُقِ The Prophet ﷺ tells us, make sure it's based on akhlaq, make sure it's based on uh, dealings, behavior, make sure it's based on something that will actually bring happiness to the home. What am I choosing for myself? What am I choosing for my family, for my kids? Why am I getting married? Is it to make my parents happy? Now, so, sometimes we've faced uh, situations like this where um, proposal after proposal, uh, the, it gets shot down and things get very toxic and the, the girl or the guy are very mad because my parents want me to get married to this cookie cutter image of what will make them very happy. And you know what? They start saying and convince themselves, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get married just to make my parents happy. And of course, that's, that's an awful decision. That's an awful decision to get married just to make another human being happy because what will happen? You'll end up oppressing the person that you're getting married to. And there are cases like this. I'm sure the sheikh has also dealt with many cases where someone actually got married to another human being, not convinced at all that this person would be their spouse. And what ended up happening? 
a very failed marriage that ended and that person ended up getting going getting married to someone else anyway because they didn't want that marriage they didn't want it they did it for someone or something else why am i getting married is it for the right reason look at this hadith now this hadith needs a lot of you know uh, fiqh and fahm and i'm next to sheikh uh, my, our beloved sheikh so he can correct me if i'm wrong uh, but you know at surface level people when they hear this hadith especially young people, they might get very happy. But there's a way to understand it that will remove some of that happiness. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, the hadith was that a woman came to the Prophet wasallam, and she said, She said to the Prophet wasallam. That my father married me to my cousin, Min ibn Akhi. He married me to my cousin uh, so that he may remove the sense of disgrace for my cousin. Right? And I don't want this marriage. So then the Prophet ﷺ made the affair in her hands. So he said, he said to her, uh, uh, It's up to you. He said, he said to her, فَجَعَلَ الْأَمْرَ إِلَيْهَا فَقَالَتْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنِّي قَدْ أَجَزْتُ مَا صَنَعَ أَبِي وَلَكِنْ أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أُعَلِّمَ النَّاسَ أَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْأَبَاءِ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ Now, bear with me until we explain the hadith. Now, she said, I agree with what my father chose for me, but I wanted, my, I wanted everyone after to know that it's not for anyone even the parents, to force a marriage upon someone who absolutely doesn't want it. Now, of course, does the opinion, now this is where we balance this out, does this mean that the parents' opinion in marriage doesn't matter? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Does, an, does the opinion of the parents matter in marriage? What, do you guys, what would you guys say for that? Uh, be honest. What do you guys think? <laughs> raise your hand. Raise your hand. Does the opinion of the parents matter? Huh? Absolutely. Okay. Jazakallah khair. Who else would like to share something? Does the opinion of the parents matter? Go ahead. Okay. They shouldn't be the final and ultimate decision makers, but it does matter. Right? Would anyone like to share something else? It matters all the way. Absolutely. Okay. Still restricted. Okay. What do you want to say? They could see stuff that you don't see. Ah, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. All right, so here, look at this. The context of this hadith is a woman who absolutely did not want the marriage and she was forced into it. Does our deen allow uh, forcing a human being into a marriage that they utterly don't want, wholeheartedly, against their will? Ikrahan wa ghasban. No, 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 we don't allow this. But the, does the opinion of the marriage of the parents matter? Absolutely. I'll tell you, there are so many cases that come our way where someone, خلص, that's it. They attach their happiness to this human being. I don't care. My father is against this. My mother is against this. And I don't care. I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I'm just going to go live somewhere else and I'm going to get married against everyone's will. I'm the one who's getting married. No one else. It's up to me. No one else matters, right? They, have, they take this very aggressive approach and they end up putting strains upon strains in their marriage and it causes a lot of devastation. Brothers and sisters, please, this one is a very important point because um, marriage without any obstacles, any extra obstacles, is already hard enough today. Many marriages, Sheikh will tell us, that most marriages end up failing. That there's a very high percentage, even if they don't get divorced, it becomes a failed marriage where they're living together and there's absolutely no relations between them. And, you know, if you add to that all kinds of strains and pressures where you, you sever ties between your uh, soon-to-be wife and your mother or your soon-to-be husband and your father, if you sever ties like that, that devastation will have a, such a very rippling effect. Now, here's how we could balance this on, um, uh, on the other side. How involved should my family 
be in the marriage process. This is, this is where sometimes uh, people who want to get married really don't have the full say in everything. And you know, um, what I mean by that is sometimes we're faced with situations where we need outside help. Where sometimes there's a lot of stress created from senseless things. Sometimes the devil is in the details. That the reason why a marriage might fail is because, uh, you know, and, and I kid, kid you not, sometimes we have cases like this, where the marriage fails because the mother wants the marriage in a certain hall, and the husband cannot afford that hall. And then it causes devastation, and it ends up leading to fights upon fights, and then they end up cutting off the khutubah. Or in other situations where uh, a family wants to invite and the other family doesn't want and they start feuding and ends up leading to problems, right? You think about, there's so, and I'm not speaking about specific circumstances. These are universals where you find dozens of cases about the devil is in the details sometimes, brothers and sisters. We need to think about this because a lot of the times, the stress that's created in relationships is coming from senseless things that are in the beginning of the marriage process, especially, especially. Who's going who's gonna to be able to, it's a battle, of, sometimes it becomes a battle of wills. Who's going to be able to overpower the other side? Is the marriage for, for, the, for the bride or is the marriage for the family of the groom? Is the marriage for the family of the bride or the family of the groom? These very foolish sometimes discussions that end up creating a lot of tension over nothing. Brothers and sisters, a lot to think about in that. And you know what? You know what? You might not have clear answers for all situations. This is a, this is a guiding, guiding light in this. In this thing, if I go through a marriage process without ever seeking advice, any step along the way, I'm making a big mistake. Because for some of these questions, they're very big. They could get very complicated. Make sure if you're going towards marriage that you have someone, someone who's learned, someone who's wise, who can be able to help you, give you advice. Make sure that you maintain certain relationships. Make sure that you have a certain delicate approach between certain, certain figures in your life. You know, how can you, how can you start a marriage with a loving relationship between your wife and, and your mother or between the families and each other or so on? This is, this needs hikmah. It needs wisdom. Sometimes the toll on a marriage comes from when it deals with issues of conflict resolution, right? Uh, uh, there's a lot of problems at home. I want to vent. Who am I going to go to vent to? If I'm the guy, I might go vent to my mother or my sister or so on and so forth. If I'm the girl, I might go vent to a friend or, or, or go vent to my mother and complain. He did this to me and he's not doing that and he's forgetting that. And then what happens? It becomes an emotional buildup and it creates so much problems. A lecture, lectures could be given. I am, says, I'm sure our, she our sheikh is going to talk about in great detail, just about this one issue, conflict resolution. How do I navigate problems uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a marriage relationship in the various stages? You know what, how do I start off a marriage relationship on the right foot? You know, I'll tell you another thing. Sometimes, part of the thing that makes it very complicated is people get emotionally invested before it's okay for them to get emotionally invested. You'll find that people, we have this dating, right? This dating thing now, uh, where people want to go months on end, they're chatting and they're meeting at a coffee shop or wherever, uh, and they're not, they don't even have khutubah yet. No khutubah, no kitb tab, and they're emotionally attached to each other. They're messaging daily basis, seeing each other multiple times a week, and then you see uh, a, a stack of devastating situations that unfold in these types of relationships. Very wrongful approach. How do I know how to give each stage its right? When is it okay for me to have certain expectations? When isn't it okay for me to have certain expectations? A lot of questions, brothers and sisters, and you know, I'm asking them for you. I'm hoping you'll think about them, and I'm hoping you'll ask someone these questions yourself. You know, so when it comes to the marriage relationship, I need to be very careful about how I manage those types of details. And make sure that a beautiful blessing, a beautiful miracle doesn't get lost because of something senseless. Because I'll tell you sometimes the way, you know, like, you know, people lose their patience. You know, the khutubah is for months or is for a year 
or whatever it might be, and I can't be patient, I need this, I need that, I expect this, I expect that, and you find that a beautiful ni'mah goes away because of ajal. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلْ A human being has been created in haste. سَأُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِي فَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ Brothers uh, and sisters, it, when, it, when you're talking about considering marriage, a lot of the discussion is about priorities. What's your priority? Really, really, what's your priority? What are you thinking about? Top of the list, what's really most important to you? Sometimes you might say, <laughs> sometimes you might say, oh, it's deen. Of course it's deen. I want to please Allah Azza wa Jal. And then you find yourself in a situation where you have an opportunity with someone who didn't match a certain image in your mind, but their deen is amazing. And you choose to walk away from it because what? Your true priority comes to light. So what's my true priority? I need to be honest with myself. Look at this beautiful story from our sunnah, the story of Julaybib. The story of Julaybib, it's a very beautiful story. Julaybib was someone who had, didn't have outward beauty at all. He, did, he, wasn't, he wasn't a very appealing uh, person in terms of his image. And um, he had some physical deformities. And the Prophet ﷺ loved him. The Prophet loved Julaybib. And the Prophet ﷺ wanted him to get married. So he came to a man from the Ansar and he said to him, Marry me your daughter. <laughs> Marry me your daughter. He, the Prophet is asking this Ansari, marry me your daughter. So the man misunderstood. He got so excited. He got so happy. Because he thought the Prophet وسلم, was asking for himself. So uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, Inni lastu uridu nafsi. I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking, so he said, Falimani ya Rasulullah, qalli Julaybib. I'm asking for Julaybib. So now the man went from happiness, he was high up, now up very low. Who's Julaybib? Who's his family? It's disgraceful. Who, we're going to get married to Julaybib? What's that going to mean for me? What image is that? You know, again, the foolishness sometimes comes out. and We're from a very respected family. I need to get married to a very respected family too. I can't get married to someone who's not from a respectful family like mine. Right? So he said... He said, I'll, Ya Rasulullah, ushawiru ummaha. I'll go and consult her mother. <laughs> so the mother got extremely upset. She said, A Julaybib ibna. Is Julaybib his son? Why is he putting us in this type of situation? Why is he asking for Julaybib? So then the girl, she was very smart. She was smarter than her parents. She said uh, to her parents, Atarudduna ala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amra. Are you really going to say no to the Prophet? She said, He said, She said, Marry me off because I know the Prophet's not going to make me in vain. The Prophet's not going to choose wrongfully for me. So, Whatever you want. So then she got married, and the Prophet وسلم, made a lot of dua for her when he found out her wisdom. And her priorities. Look at her priority. Is the Prophet asking for this? I want it. He said, he made this dua for her. She, he said, Allahumma subba alayha al khayra subba wa la taj'al aishaha kaddan kadda. Oh Allah, give her goodness in abundance and don't make her life a miserable life. Sayyidina Julaybib actually passed away soon after this. She didn't really live long with him. And after he passed away, uh, the, all of the people, all of the guys in Medina were fighting over getting married to this woman. Why? Because they knew the Prophet made dua for her. And the Prophet ﷺ's dua is mustajab. Talk about priorities. Talk about priorities. Do I really want to be happy? What do I think is going to make me happy? What decisions am I going to make to help me get there? Brothers and sisters, there's a lot really that we could talk about. And I really don't know how long I've been talking. <laughs> so I told the Sheikh Qatanani, he gave me 45 minutes. And I said, oh, that's too long. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll take less than this. And we always do this, uh, unfortunately. Shiyukh, we always take longer than the time. So I'll stop here, uh, just so we could benefit from our beloved Sheikh and learn from him. Um, and uh, I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal... Uh, blesses everyone here who's not married with a righteous spouse that gives them the best of this dunya and the akhirah. Allahumma ameen.
no, no, no. الله يبارك فيك. We want to listen more and to benefit from you. السلام عليكم everybody. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless our time, to bless Shaaban and to make us among the people of Ramadan and to accept it from us إن شاء الله. Uh, my brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose the best for you in this life and the hereafter and to make you the most successful couples and spouses uh, in your life and inshallah in Jannah, bi'ithnillah. Uh, this issue, as I mentioned before, is very, very, uh, very what we call it, uh, long discussions and workshops that we need. Uh, we need to listen for more lectures, more workshops, and also to read more books. So if you can read about this matter as much as you can read, the first word in the Quran, read, because read will build yourself, will build your mental health, will build your thoughts, will your hearts, your ideas, your understanding about, about everything in this world, especially the social life and the social relationships and the marriage life. Many questions you have to ask yourself in this moment. First, why I want to get married or why I am married? Why? Write that question and answer and send me your answer, inshallah, after 10 years. <laughs> Ask yourself now, why? And the why will t tell you about the objectives of the marriage and the family life in Islam and also for yourself, because sometimes I want to get married for that reason or that reason. So please read about the objectives of the family laws, يعني قانون الفاميلي, and also the marriage life in Islam. Because we don't have time. I will not ask you now to write some of these objectives and to discuss some of these objectives. We'll not talk about it, but please be careful and learn them uh, in the best way. So are you ready, inshallah, to write what are the objectives of marriage in Islam? Second, what are the conditions and the descriptions and the characteristics that you want to be in your, inshallah, your spouse or your wife, husband. Because the objectives are related and connected with these characteristics and conditions. If you want somebody just to enjoy li life and to be happy and to fulfill your desires, it is different than you want to have a company with a woman that she will get you and take you and go together to Jannah, inshallah. Some people, they want the wife or the husband because of the green card. So I don't care about her deen. I don't care about her, her beauty. Just a credit card, uh, not credit card. A green card. Sometimes people want credit card. <laughs> she wants him because of his credit card and he has a lot of money. Unfortunately, the first question is very important. When somebody comes to you, what is the first answer? What is your job? What is the color of your car? What did you study? These issues show that these are the most important issues in your mind and in your life. So I have here a book which I recommend everybody to read. This book is Before You Tie 
uh, before you tie the knot. So it is homework. Everybody, please take the name. And uh, inshallah, maybe you, Ahmed will bring more. I think he, he has no more books. But this book has to be read before you tie the knot. It is Sister Selma al Jadari. She is our sister, very, very good sister and very successful uh, and very skillful person in family issues. Sister Selma and uh, with Sheikh uh, Muhammad Majid. So I recommend this book. So read it. Uh, you have at the end of the book, premarital questionnaire. You need also to learn these questions. They have more than 106 questions to learn about before the marriage. For example, basic information to know about. Because sometimes I receive some parents, Sheikh, I want to, inshallah, to cut the kitab for my daughter next Thursday. Welcome. What's the name? Wallah, he doesn't remember his name or her name. Sometimes, from where? I don't know. Wallahi, if you want to buy a car, you will have more investigation and learning about the car more than a wife of the future or the husband of the future. This is very bad. This is shame. You have to, to know this person in details. Sometimes I know some people, they don't care about any issue. The first question, does he or she have a green card? Yes, alhamdulillah. Go, go ahead, right away, now. I will write it now. For example, sometimes they look to, the, to his uh, college, the university, his career. His... So you have to learn about basic information, core values. What is the role of the husband? What is the role of the wife? So now I want to get married. So what is the role of the wife in my life? Husband in my life. What are the expecta expectations of marriage? So the, most of the time the problems come from the expectations. What are your goals in life? This person wants to go to that side, the other one will go to the other side. So you have to understand the issues of the goals. Also, you have to know about the health, about how to raise children, yes, before marriage. And I recommend to read some books about Tarbiyat al-Awlaad fil Islam before marriage. For example, Tarbiyat al-Awlaad fil Islam, Sheikh Abdullah Nasr Wan. Why? Because you have to raise yourself and to discipline yourself before the marriage. Go back. Because your father or your mother missed some issues in your character. So you have to, to work on yourself. So, read the book of Muslim character, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Ghazali. Everybody has to read it. Muslim character. Read the ideal Muslim, the ideal Muslim. Because you have to prepare yourself before being a husband or wife. Now, so ask the sheikh, what are the books that I have to read to prepare myself for the next stage of my life? And if I ask you this question, who read a book last month? Read. Uh, uh, Raise your hand if you read if you read a book last month. Not the books of the Derase. Not the books. What is the book that you read? What? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ali, what did you read? Okay. Okay. That's good book. So he wants to learn about the nature of the woman and the nature of man. So he read the book of 
women from the Venus and men from uh, of Mars. So he is from Mars. That's good. Uh, it is a good book, by the way. Good to read. So my advice, every month you have to read a book about different issues to build yourself, to develop your skills. Read books about الحوار, communication skills. Skills of communication, skills of dialogue and debates. And because to, very soon you will have dialogue with your wife. So you have to know how to communicate and to open discussions and different subjects. Learn about uh, the skills of الاختلاف. اقرأ فقه الاختلاف. If I agree or disagree with my wife, so what I have to do? If I agree or disagree with somebody, so please go and put your books that you have to read this year. For example, you have to read some books about how to win people. Daniel Carnegie. If you did not read at least, at least three books in this subject, it means you are too late. How to win people and how to convince people. So you need to convince your wife in the future. She needs to convince you. So what, who read Daniel Carnegie, How to Convince People? You don't need it. You read it, of course, 10, 100 years. Who read it? No. If you did not read How to Win People and to Convince Them, so please read it. We have many, many books of, of that. Even you have, this one. Second, you have the seven habits or the eight habits for Kobe. Anybody read that? Read these books. Read, read them. Read these books, the eight eight uh, habits for successful leader or for successful, and also for the family. Very good books. Unfortunately, the Ummah of Reed, they don't read. The Ummah of Reed don't read. Open the doors of reading. You have to have your own library and to to put and to invest money in these books ebook or hard books when you see any book about something related to the to your family to your children in the future about your relationship about these things read and write write some of the uh, advices from that book. So read about how to raise children. When? Before. Because you have to, to work on yourself. Too many things you lost, you miss. I recommend now the book of Tarbiyat al of Islam for everyone who is married and who is not married. Abdullah Nasa Hulwan. There is a book in Arabic, I'm not sure if it is translated, but for Arabic speakers, also good book for Sheikh Mahmoud Mahdi al-Islambuli, which is Tuhfat uh, al-Harus. It is a good book to be read. Because 45 minutes will not prepare you, prepare you to be the best husband in the world or to succeed in your marriage. Just to open the doors for you to work on yourself before the marriage. And let me be very honest with you all and with the parents. The main reason for the, div the divorce these days because of bad selection and choice. Bad selection. Because he or she selected each other 
in very wrong way. Sometimes because they were in the, the same school, worked together, they uh, saw each other in the gym, they met with each other on the social media. They don't know each other. If you think that you know that person because you went with him or with her to the restaurant and sat down for one hour, two hours talking while you are eating everything, mashallah, dreaming, you fool yourself. That person will be the best person in the world while eating. And you, by the way, everybody in our time is very skull, skillful in talks and speaking. We are in the time of talks and kalam. Harvard teaching people how to talk, not to work. We are in the time of, mashallah, jami'at. Jami'at betkharaj al yahku. We need people of good action, not good talks. Everybody can talk. عشان هيك at the time of the engagement خطبة ما شاء الله they are very happy everybody was but the second day of the marriage we come to the action everything is different الله sometimes they fight each other in that night the first night of the marriage and he hit her wow I First day, second day, not first day. First day, and she made a problem because, unfortunately, because of the wedding. When they reached to the point of the wedding, they became enemies. Wallahi ya Shaykh At the time of the wedding, sometimes they are sitting on the lodge, but they don't talk with each other. Wallahi, the families don't talk with each other. Sometimes they call me, please come to al-salih bainhum. Fil uras. You can imagine. Because talks is different. Action is the, is the thing that we need. So don't. But then, we have to learn how to control ourselves, to control our anger. Before the marriage, anger, desires, emotions, have to control ourselves. So if somebody comes to me, I have to know, is he is the person that he will be very angry for nothing, for anything, or he can control himself. That can you call if you want, to marry somebody or to befriend somebody, make him angry and see what is his response. Of course, it will be over that night. Eh? So don't make him angry, Sheikh. Otherwise, you will not get married. So you have to learn from that, in that moment, that this person, if I have a mistake, he knows how to handle that mistake or he doesn't. So we need to work on our children before the, before the wedding and the marriage. And unfortunately, people from one year before researching for a wife, for my son, or for my daughter, until the wedding, we are working on shakliyat. Shakliyat. What shakliyat, Sheikhna? Uh, appearances, not lub, not the main issues. We are working on, for example, the urus wem dikon, which hole, the qaa, what type of flowers that we need, what is the food, what is the sweet, and sometimes we have big problems and fights. Because of these issues. But we don't talk about the main issues. What are the main issues in the future? About what is the social relationships? About the relationship with the family-in-laws? About the friendships? About the emotions? About the financial, uh, the financial responsibilities from both sides? 
وي دونت وونت تو توك اباوت ذا ماهر اند المغالاه في المهور ولا 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 الى اخره. وي نيد ناو فور بيرنتس فور تشيلدرن تو تيك كير اوف ذات وات وي نيد تو سكسيد ان اور ماريج نوت تو فيل. I am sorry to say this. Sometimes I read from the beginning of the marriage contract or relationship, it is a proposal for fail or for divorce from the beginning. Because something wrong there. في عندنا مثل بالعربي المكتوب بنقرا من عنوانه. مكتوب بنقرا من عنوانه. The envelope, uh, the letter, يعني, can read it from the topic. From the beginning, you see that this marriage will fail, will, will end to divorce, unfortunately. And this is the problem that we face now. So for my children, my sons and daughters, we have to, to put in our hearts that we want to succeed. And we have to do all our power and to empower ourselves with all the skills and the needs to succeed. Because of that, الجاهل عدو نفسه. If you don't know, you are the enemy of yourself. You have to know before the marriage. And we are in the era and the time and the place, they don't care about the success of the marriage in the, f- the future. They don't care. They do care about work, about career. Even we teach our daughters not to be mothers or wives. We teach them in the same way we teach and educate our children. So our, our daughters, in their mentality and, and understanding, They think about work, about shahada, uh, about al-ilm, al-college. But we have to teach our daughters how to be wives and mothers first. And we have to teach you before being an employee or a worker to be a successful husband and father. Because the happiness will not come through your career or your college. It will come through your family. The happiness is built on the success of the happiness of the family. If you have the best car, the best career, the best work, the best, the best house, and you are not happy in your relationship with your husband and wife, you will not be a true happy in this life. And also, maybe in the hereafter. Because فَسَادُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ الْحَالِقَةِ فَسَادُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ الْحَالِقَةِ لا أقول تحلق الشعر ولا تتحلق الدين. We, we want to build the, the family and the relationship between spouses on harmony and what we call it الثلاثيات. Three things which are mentioned in the very beautiful ayah, which we always read and listen to. Al-mawadda wa-sakina wa-rahma. Tranquility, love, mercy. This will not come without manners and behavior, akhlaq. What are the manners of Muslim? What are the manners of the wife? What are the manners of the of the husband. Many things we have to learn before marriage and after marriage. And number one, and be honest with yourself. Choose the right, the right choice, the right spouse. Choose the best and think about the deen. فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينَ رسول الله said the deen, deen, deen. Choose the faithful, truthful, honest, sincere, 
religious, smart spouse, husband and wife. So this message is for both, not only for, for the man, not the, both of them. I know 100% that you want the most beautiful woman and the most handsome man. But believe me, it is not, it is not the main reason for happiness. Because beauty, beauty and beauty and, uh, and handsomeness will go after a few days. The, 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 the most important or the, the real beauty is the beauty of the soul, the manners, the communication, the akhlaq. This will be increased with the, with the times, but the, the shape beauty will go with the days. Wallahi, I saw in the community very beautiful sisters, and they were divorced. And you can't be surprised. And he told me, Wallahi, I saw her as a shaitan. I remember the Prophet ﷺ hadith when he said, لا تتزوج امرأة لجمالها فلعل جمالها يغويها. Don't get married with a woman for her beauty. Maybe her beauty will make her deviated from or deviated from the, the way of Allah. And don't marry her because of money. ولكن ذات لذات دين أفضل. Question now. Who is better in the sight of Allah, man or woman? Who is? Who is better in the sight of Allah, man or woman? You have to you have to know the, the answer. Why don't I answer? Quick. Who is better? طيب ما عرفتوش. Who is better, man or woman? Huh? أتقاكم إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم الله said that in آية من ذكرنا وأنثى you are created from man and woman you are man and woman so the man is not better than the woman the woman is not better than the man the best among you those who are the most righteous people أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم so don't think that you are a man, alhamdulillah, you have a strong muscles, alhamdulillah, I don't have. You have the power that you can, you have money. Don't think that you are better. You are better when you are more taqwa, when you have more taqwa. You fear Allah more. You love Allah more. You pray more. And you too. You are not better than him because your father is of, of Muhammad. Do you know who is you, my father? Do you know who is my family? Who you are? I finished the school. I, 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 I. Remember, I, me, for me, these d destroyed the shaitan and Pharaoh and the people before us. Don't be destroyed with Anna. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humbleness is the key of the success of the family. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. When you have mistakes, say, I am sorry. Say, I am sorry. And learn how to say it. I am sorry. Say, I am sorry. لا, أنا ما بغلط. I don't have mistakes. مظبوط شيخ؟ أنا ما بغلط. يو بتغلط بس أي أم نات. وي أر بيبل. هيومن بيينغ. وي أر مستيكس. سو وين يو هاف مستيكس ليرن هاو تو فيكس. هاو تو ساي أي أم سوري. أي ريكومند تو هاف وات وي كول إت بري نفتال أجريمنت بيفور ماريج. سبحان الله أي فاوند ذات between Abu Sa'id and Um Sa'id. Who is Abu Sa'id and Um Sa'id? Oh. Abu Sa'id and Um Sa'id. You know Um Sa'id? 
أم سعيد زوجة أبو سعيد The wife of أبو سعيد حسن البصري One day the people asked him شيخ أبو سعيد Yes How many times or how many times do you have problems did you have problems with أم سعيد He said None Zero أبو سعيد was the best person after the Sahaba among the followers the best one according to most of ulama Hassan al Abu Sa'id what are you talking about no problems no he said look at the first day the first night when I ret- when we returned back and we got together she said wait Abu Sa'id sit down now she made the muhadara for Sheikh Abu Al-Hasan Basri, the big alim, the great alim. He says, wait, 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 what are you, wait, 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 sit down. Sit down. They sat down. Abu Sa'id, tell me, what do you like? What you don't like? What, who, whom you want them to visit us? Whom you don't want them to visit us? What, what, what? Give me the list. Subhanallah. He told her, Everything. قال فوالله ما خالفت فيما اتفقنا عليه في شيء. She did not disagree with anything. She was honest. She learned. She learned everything. And we know how to deal with each other. This is very important. You have to know you and you and we. We have to learn together what we want from each other. What I expect from him or from her. So that agreement is very important to sit down, not to discuss the types of flowers on the tables that night and to disagree and to have mashakil. Think about what do you want to do in the, in the future? How do you want me to, to deal with your family, with your brothers, with your sisters? What is the best way? He has to tell you. She has to tell you. We have the period of khutbah. Fatrat al-khutbah. You have to learn and to know what you have to do at that, at that time, which is before Katb al-Kitab, the engagement time. And also the Fatrat al-Aqd, which is the, 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 the time of the contract, which is before and after. And Fatrat al Urs and after Mabad al Urs. You have to learn how to deal with these stages and to know what, how to act in the right way. Most of the time, most of the times when we have problems before the marriage, before the wedding, because the, the whole family is a part of the agreement. The mother-in-law wants so and so. The father, the brother, everybody. And the, after the marriage, will be easier. After the wedding, will everything will be easier. So that time, I want to uh, to advise the families and the parents to make these times very easy. To save money, to save time, to save discussions, make it very simple. Don't go for hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for nothing. Use that money for the future, for having a house, for having, of saving a money for something, for education or for something more important than wasting that money for nothing. Make it very simple. Marriage. And my, I am so happy that when I saw some a new righteous couples, when they put that money for orphans, they said, we don't want to, to waste that money for the wedding party. We will put that money for orphans or for something or for building a masjid or a school. That means a lot. You have to understand about, you have to understand about your spouse, what does it mean? His character 
الجانب النفسي الجانب العاطفي الايموشنال سايد منتال سايد يو هاف تو اندرستاند هيز ايفن باك جراوند از هي ريليجيوس از هي نوت شي از شي از تو ليرن اباوت اولسو اباوت هير اند هيز فيوتشر جولز بيكوز سام تايمز شي ثينكس اباوت شي وانتس تو to to finish the phd and school and he is not so after one year they will find themselves in different اهتمامات and interest things so it is very important to learn about each other and also to compromise especially after the marriage after the marriage the marriage is built on عقد مؤبد marriage is built on eternal contract Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وذاك if you go to fiqh books you will find az-zawaj aqdun mu'abbad it is haram and forbidden to marry somebody with the intention of divorce it is forbidden to marry somebody for a period of time just one year i will divorce her this is khiyana this is jarima We don't have زواج متعة عندنا or زواج مؤقت or زواج with the with the niya of divorce the intention of divorce. So divorce marriage is built for ever. She is your wife, and you will get her إن شاء الله and take her to Jannah with you إن شاء الله. Will Jannah you are from first day you agree to be wife and husband together إن شاء الله. It is very important to to build yourselves on خلق التغافر. You have to forgive one another, forgiveness, tolerance, تراحم, تسامح. Learn and know that we are human beings. Means we have mistakes. So forgive one another. الاحتمال. One of the most dangerous. أخلاق that I see behind the divorce ضعف الاحتمال ما بيحتمله ما زمان كان في قوة احتمال our grandmothers our mothers they used to have uh, very strong uh, forbearance حلم وسعة وقوة يعني بتلاقي الواحد متحمل كل الدنيا وبتس وتصبر because of her children she is she was she used to be very patient for her children for her husband for everybody والله كل الدنيا ضدها وصابره now she has everything but she has no patience she has everything he has everything but he is not patient now she has or he has one kid or two kids وطفرانة وزهكان الدنيا وزهكانين. I have two kids. My mother has ten. My uh, somebody of my family fourteen. My mother-in-law fourteen. And her sister fourteen too, or sixteen. One husband and one wife. عمرهم ما شكوا. They did not complain. ما شاء الله. Now two kids. What is this life full of care? What is, what kind of life is? Two kids. كل الحمد لله. I take them to the doctor. I take them to the school. I take them to the. To the, the, the. قولوا الله. قولوا الله. قولوا الله. So please, please, be, be, inshallah, very powerful and faithful. And the same, of course, the, the man. كانوا زمان الرجل يرجع من الحصيدة ويرجع مبسوط. أخونا جاي من شغله وإلى آخره زعلان. أخونا ما كان عنده لا air condition ولا heat وفي البرد والثلج وما شاء الله عليه زي الذهب اللي يوم الله وكيلك. مكندش ومظبط والى اخره وبرجع زعلان مبوز بوزه شبرين يا اخي مشان الله 
بليز انف از انف And this is عقوبه والله this is a punishment from Allah سبحانه وتعالى type of punishments for men and women patience جزاؤه الجنه when you have صبر and احتمال it shows your strong faith and iman remember that you have rights and you have responsibilities and duties and the question Which are more important, your rights or your duties and responsibilities? Answer. Which are more important, your rights or your responsibilities? Both. Which are more important? Both. Which are more important? Responsibilities and duties are more important. Don't think both. Answer. Forget it. I don't care about my rights. My rights are very important in the democratic system in America. I will ask about my rights, but in Islam you have to ask and to work about your obligations and duties and responsibilities, because <clears throat> your responsibilities are the questions of Allah for you in the judgment day. Allah will ask you not about your rights. Will ask you about your responsibilities and obligations. In the judgment day, Allah will ask care about your about your rights. She will be questioned about your rights. He will be questioned about your rights. So, Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. Some Allah will ask for my rights. So, the main issue in Islam to do what I have to do. And I am sure when I do my responsibilities and my obligations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me, will please me, Allah will reward me. Because sometimes I am tested with the husband who doesn't care about my rights. Who doesn't care or she doesn't care what I have to do. Don't لا تقابل السيئة بسيئة قابل السيئة بحسنة. Don't face The bad with bad. Face the bad with good. ادفع بالتي هي أحسن. If you want to fix him, don't challenge him with the same way. Challenge him with the best way. And this is the way of fixing the issues in Islam. قابل السيئة بحسنة. The mentality now According to the democratic system, what are my rights? Give me my rights. I don't care about your responsibility, my responsibilities or your rights. So this is the mentality of most people. What we need now, we need to fix to my rights number two, my responsibilities number one. I wrote a book about happy marriage in Islam, and I. يعني advise everybody to read it in Arabic and English. Alhamdulillah translated. My advice, and I wrote, I wrote that in that book. Read that book not to know your rights. Read that book to know your responsibilities. Because most of people they read the book or any book just to to know their. Read and learn the responsibilities. Now I will, I will be a wife. I will be a husband. The question is, what I have to do to succeed as a husband? If you think in that way, that I will be happy when she is one, she is two, she is three, she is four, she is five. So I think that she, you will be happy When you say, "I want to make her happy," I will do one, two, three, four, five. You have to say, "I will do one, two, three, four, five to make him happy." If you want to be happy, make her happy. If you want to be happy, make yourself happy. Hadash dhaik dalali. You didn't understand the joke. 
you did not understand the joke. Ya samaha Allah, rahi dars. Again, if you want to be happy, what you have to do? Make him happy. If you want to make, to make yourself happy, what you have to do? Make her happy. Work for her. Work, work for him. Who will succeed in that matter? Both. Because his happiness in your hand, his her happiness in your hand. If you think that your happiness just to ask her to make you happy, you will not be happy, she will not be happy. And I like the, the statement saying, happy wife is... No, happy wife is... Happy husband, happy wife, and happy husband together. Work together. Work together. Love one another. You have to learn how to make balance in your life. أعطي كل ذي حق حقه. Your work has right. Your work. Your school has right. Your father has rights. Mother has rights. Your God, Allah, your Rabb has rights. أعطي كل ذي حق حقا. When you can fulfill all the rights and have the balance, you will succeed. I assure you that you will succeed. There is no contradiction between the right of the mother and the right of the wife. Different matters and issues. Don't mix between them. My, my mother on my head I will give her rights, her rights, but my wife too. Don't think that if you love your wife, you don't love your mother or the opposite. The heart can contain the love of the entire world. You can love your mother and your wife at the same time and love all everybody in this world. A man is a leader. What about the woman? Is she a leader? She is a leader too. But I want to talk to, talk to, to this side because they are very dangerous people. The man is the leader of the house and he has to be very smart. Most of the time, the feel of the house because of the الغباء والحمق. في شيء اسمه الحكمة الذكاء الاجتماعي الذكاء الانفعالي الذكاء العاطفي you have to be smart you have to know how to win your wife and the entire world you are the leader remember that you have to be, to be the best you have to be the role model of your Children, control your tongue. Don't curse. Don't say bad words. Don't have bad mouth. Like most of the people which we see in this الزمن الأخبار اللي إحنا فيه. Bad words with bad mouth. This is not the Islam. Your mouth. كل كلمة you will be questioned. Allah will ask you about every word. Say the best. وقل لعبادي يقول لها هي أحسن إن الشيطان ينزغ بينهم. Use the tools and the means in the right way. Don't let this be better than your husband or your wife. Don't let your social media ruin you and destroy your relationship with your family members or your wife or husband. Don't let the social media to destroy your life and your family. هذا كله ابتلاء وامتحان. ما تعطيهوش وقت زيادة. Don't give the phone more time than it deserves. You have to learn about too many things, how to, to plan. 
Because if you plan, you plan to succeed. If you don't plan, you plan to fail. You have to plan for الجانب المالي, الجانب الإيماني, الجانب الاجتماعي, جانب الكارير, جانب you have to improve yourself and to develop and to improve your work in the life. You have to learn together how to save money, how to spend, spend money in the right way, المصروفات والمدخرات, because sometimes المشاكل بسبب الفاينانس والمشاكل المالية. So you have to learn before marriage and at the beginning of your marriage to know how to, to use your money wise, wisely, both of you, and to be amin, amin ala, al, uh, ala dhalik. I don't want to take more time. I know that it is just... Uh, I recommend this book. It is Al-Usra fi Maqasid al-Shari'a, Qira'a fi Qadaya al-Zawaj wa al-Talaq fi Amerika. Dr. Zainab al-Ulwani. She is a great scholar. She wrote a book about the, the family uh, according to the objectives of Sharia in America, for Muslim family in America. I recommend this book to be, and it is uh, according to my understanding in English and Arabic. Al-Usra. So read about the family objectives and about... This is Rajal Marikh. This is the Marikh, Mars and the Venus. So you are from Venus, so may Allah help you. Uh, for example, uh, about parenting. There is a beautiful book about parenting. Also, you have to read from day one and before. Uh, because we don't want to be late in learning about how to raise children. Because it, it will be tafakkahu qabla an tusawwadu. Be fuqaha, be knowledgeable before marriage. May Allah SWT bless you. I'm sorry, we took all the time, Sheikh. We did not leave any time for you, for any question, because you don't have questions, I know. So the time now for you, if you have any comment, any question, any uh, suggestion, وجزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جزاكم الله خير. تفضلوا. If you have any question or any suggestion or any comment, يعني you are welcome. شاء. حابب نرحب بأخونا الدك الحبيب محمود أبو عساكر from Washington D.C. and ما شاء الله من الأخوة اللي يعني. من المسؤولين في الأمم المتحدة عن ملايين اللاجئين ملايين اللاجئين is responsible about, about 80 millions of refugees in the world this man it is an honor to have you محمود أهلا وسهلا بكم any question or any comment إن شاء الله أهلا وسهلا بكم if you don't تفضل علي شيخنا تفضل شيخنا يلا بليز بليز توكل الله توكل اي ويل كنت احكي هسه توكل um, Bismillah. So I guess uh, there's a lot to say about this question, uh, to be honest with you, assessing the stages. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, the question is how to assess um, uh, each stage and its uh, 
basically its duties and its responsibilities, basically how to get to know the, uh, the other side. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so basically, um, uh, in the beginning, when both sides are getting to know to each other, it's meant to be uh, sort of a formal interaction, not to have any focus on intimate communication, uh, um, uh, especially before engagement and even before Ketwiktab, during the engagement period, Khutuba before Ketwiktab. And the reason why this is the, the cause is to see if there's ballpark compatibility. You know, in our deen, we don't buy into this uh, fairy tale Disney image that I have a one true love, someone who's written for me, and I need to find a spark. Some people, they, you know, I, I've, I've dealt with some people who they come for advice and they say, well, I've, been, I've seen so many different options, but I'm just not feeling a spark. And I don't want to say yes until I feel a spark. And this, you know, uh, this attitude towards it is not really a positive one. Because our deen teaches us you build love. You learn to love. You cultivate love through experiences. But at that stage, what's necessary is ballpark compatibility. And of course, you know, uh, to approach this, you can't really have a heavy-handed approach. And now I'm going to have certain demands, or I want this, or have that. I would, especially as the guy who's the one who's asking, sort of defer to the f girl and the family, to the manner of communication that they're comfortable with, uh, and then slowly take it from there until you find whatever you need to make a decision. Allah, no. that's just some point. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Usama. Shuf, uh, and this is very important for everybody, this question, because it talks about three things in, the, in these stages. Three things, not only one. First, the Hakam Sharia, Islamic rulings. Second, the customs and the Araf. Third, the Shurut is the Aeliya, the Waka al Aeli. Because uh, sometimes different from a person to another one, from family to another family, from village to another village. And not only the conditions, but sometimes a person who is okay with you to come to visit them every day, every night. Ahlan wa sahlan, khatibna wa khatibna wa khatib al-bayt kullu, hayya Allah, it is an honor. If he wants to speak every day ten times, that's okay. Twenty times, that's okay. Alhamdulillah, welcome. Asadaqna wa jawaznaha wa tkhallasna minna wa rahmatullah alayhi. That's okay. That's okay. But once, kullu, I'll tell you like that. Some people are very easy. Some people, what are you, what do you want? Why are you talking every day? Just a joke. A person came to me after Salat Jummah and he said, Sheikh, I am Allah very tired because of my daughter and her uh, bride. They talk a lot. I told him, please let him get married. They will not talk with each other. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Because in the time of the wedding, Allah said, you have to talk with each other. I am, I am shocked, wallahi. I don't mean that, but the person, when he comes to get married, he has to learn what are the ahkam shari'iyya, which are permitted, which are haram, forbidden, in, in these stages. We have the first stage, al hiya al khutbah. So what are the rulings of the engagement, khutbah? Khutbah, it means wa'adun bizzawaj. It is not zawaj. It is a promise that you agree, I agree, to marry each other. So it is just a promise. So ma Baghdad, I can't have khalwa with her. I can't go with her. I can't sit down with her all the time, talk with her. No, it is just engagement. Now, from engagement until Qurayt al-Fatiha, Qurayt al-Fatiha, what does it mean? What does it mean, Sheikh, Qurayt al-Fatiha? It is the confirmation for the engagement. Confirmation. Qur'an al-Fatiha, but it is not marriage. It is not kitab. Kitab. Now, Kitab al Kitab, what does it mean? When we write the contract, the marriage, and we say the ijab and kabul, what does it mean? It is half marriage. Half marriage. 
It is marriage without the execution, the tenfid. Some hukmun مع وقف التنفيذ. The execution now, if I am right, هذا خس اختيار كلمة execution is that right? بصير تنفيذ بصير بصير. إذا حكم بوقف التنفيذ معناها. The now عدم التنفيذ. It means with the wedding. So last time Allah God forbids if the divorce happened after the contract had been written. And before the wedding, she, if the, if the divorce because of him, not of her, he has to pay half of the mahar al muqaddam and the postponed one. Half. But if it is after the wedding, he has to pay the full, the full amount of the mahar muqaddam and muakhar. Understood here? You learn, you know that. From the other side, between between the contract and the marriage, you have to follow the customs and the traditions of the of the uh, of the bride and her family. Sometimes it is mamnuad to go out. If you go out, I will send you my son with you. Mm. You understand? Forbidden. If you sit down, doors have to be open. If you want to talk, with the permission. So you have to follow these customs. Sometimes the family, they are very easy and they say, Allah, it, my advice, don't break these traditions. Don't break these traditions and customs because Sultan al Urf. The authority of the customs and the tradition, especially some some tribes, some villages, some ashira families, be careful. So from the beginning, sit down with your uncle, ammo. What do you expect me from? Wallah, you are welcome to come once a week. You are welcome to come when I am home. You are welcome. Where to talk with her twice a week. That's okay. Listen and follow these conditions. Because the mashroot shartan, mashroot al maruf orfan, mashroot shartan. And so on. This is, I think, the advice. It is very sensitive time, especially how to know each other. The, the two families have to help you to know each other and to give you more time from, from the beginning until the country tab. You are welcome to sit down once, twice, three times to talk with each other until having... But of course, we ha they have to be... Nah, they have to be what? A sheikhna? They have to be. Ah, it has to be there. Be احترام, تقدير, وكذا. ومش بعدين not to annoy and to bother the families. We have to be be smart, يعني when we discuss these issues. And also, I have to استعين بمن حولي في معرفة بعضنا البعض. شيك على كلن. We'll talk more. شو هذا السؤال؟ تفضل جاوب عليه جاوب. Uh, we have a question from someone. Okay, what are the steps to approach when one is alone uh, to meet someone? We don't have family, we are converts. Jazakumullah uh, khair. Because of this question and this matter, we have the matrimonial service in the masajid and uh, alhamdulillah muassasat, big organizations. So try to reach to the masjid. We are your family. We are your parents, inshallah, from both sides. We are your families. We are one family. We will help your family, inshallah, to, to know this person or the other person. So, inshallah, 
I want to assure everyone in the community that we are here in the masjid through myself, my Sheikh Usama, and the committee of the matrimonial services. Alhamdulillah, we have a very good uh, committee, inshallah, to help you, bi'idhnillah, to succeed, inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Just to add one thing to what our beloved Sheikh was saying, uh, there's a quote, I don't know if I'm quoting it precisely, but it's, uh, it says that it takes uh, five minutes to become acquainted with someone, but it takes a lifetime to actually get to know them. Uh, no matter what you do, you're never going to reach 100%. And it's a very big mistake to say that I need to reach 100% before I can go through with a marriage proposal. It'll never, that's what we meant by ballpark compatibility. Is this someone who I could potentially build a life for? I maybe reach a conviction of 70%, 80%, maybe, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Uh, but the rest, there's always gonna be a risk in marriage. And if anyone's not willing to take a risk, then they'll never get married. No. no. Of course, you have to know each other, the basics, and after that you will know more and more. And also, you have, even if you don't know each other, you have to accommodate each other. You have to adapt each other, to learn each other, okay? And you have to learn how to, to change yourself to be a good husband for her and good wife for him. So you have to change. So change is very important in marriage life. You have to change yourself from day to day. Something she hates, you have to learn. Something he hates. It doesn't mean sometimes that issue is not very important for you, but very important for her. I, I fix myself because of her, because of her family, and so on. So don't think that only you need to, ch to know her or him. Also, you are ready to change yourself. Are you ready to change? Are you ready? This is a question. Are you ready to change? Yes, we are ready. Say yes. Are you ready to change? We have to change. The sheikh has to change? <laughs> he has to change. I have to change. Until you have to change. Everybody has to change. Anything which you th see that it is not suitable and not good with the other part, I have to change myself and listen to the criticism or to the advices. Learn how to accept advices. I know that women don't like criticism at the beginning of their life. They don't like, especially at the first year. Don't criticize. Don't criticize. Wallahi, this is my advice. Do you know when you start to criticize? When? When? Do you know when? When the best time to criticize wife? Never. Never. Don't criticize. What I have to do to change her? What is the best way to change woman? What is the best way? What is the best way? Give us the advice. If I want to change my wife, what is the best? She, by the way, she listened to me now. <laughs> what is the best way to change your wife? Any, any, advi any advice? To be a role model and good example for her. Listen, if you want to change anybody, be the go role model for him or for her. Change her by being good, by being patient, by accepting the other side accepting her or him in the right way wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah any question before leaving any question ya akhuy anta ruh tashghalak shaghla thaniya yalla assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah barakallahu fikum allah ya rabbi yassir umurkum sahih tariqukum الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله
لك بر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة Hey, y'all, and fellas. 